All right, so for 87, we have this function f with the first derivative given here as 3 minus 2x minus x squared times sine of 2x minus 3. We have to find how many relative extrema does f have on the open interval from negative 4 to 2. Okay, so the idea here is to see how many times um, the first derivative, the graph of the first derivative, changes from being positive to negative or from negative to positive. Because remember, an extrema occurs if it was a local max when that when the graph goes from increasing to decreasing. Here, the first derivative is positive. Here, it's negative. And um, then a minimum would be like where it goes from being negative to positive. It's that sort of thing. So we want to study the graph of the derivative. So let's first make let's first graph this. So let's see what we, let's see what we can get. Three minus two x minus x squared. This times sine of two x minus three. And we got, we got a crazy graph going on here. It looks like we got we got something going on here. It looks like it, that barely goes up. I'm going in from negative four. So let's zoom in. Let's analyze this better. Yeah, see, it looks like it goes up and down. Um, so we have two zeros there. You can verify this. Want to um, look at the zero specifically? So you see, we got two zeros there. One over there to the left. We have one, two zeros. So the third one, a fourth one here, a fifth one, and a sixth one. There's six zeros all before x equals two. It looks like we're gonna have six relative extrema. And again, those zeros um, matter if the graph goes from being above the x-axis to being below or vice versa. And if it just, if it, if, it, if it like had a zero, but it stayed on the same side, um, it wouldn't count as an extrema. But all of these cross, like if I want to draw a sketch of this. Like you got something looking like this. Origin there. One, two, three, four, five, six. All before, all from negative four to two. So the answer is E. Eighty-eight. Right here, we just want to analyze this. We have the graph of the twice differentiable function f of x shown here, and which of these would be true? So it looks like we're studying, we're comparing the derivative values at negative one, one, and zero. So let's just draw like tangent lines at negative one, one, and zero. So negative one, the tangent line looks like it's zero. At zero, the tangent line looks positive. And at one, the tangent line looks negative. So we, the, it should go from f prime of one is less than f prime of negative two which is less than f times zero for saying, if we're always saying less than negative one is the smallest, then negative two and then zero, just based on the signs. So we want to see where, or oh, sorry, f prime of one, f prime of one. So one, negative two, zero, if we're going from smallest to biggest. So let's see which of these work. 
Maybe. Why did I run negative two? Let me fix this. One is the biggest. Then at negative one. Then at zero. Okay. The smallest to largest. So let's see. Where does one go first? D or E. Then. So it looks like that's going to be D. F of one, or F prime of one is a negative value. F prime of negative one looks like a zero, and F prime of zero is positive. Let's go to 89. Right here we have the volume of the solid generated when the region bounded by the graph of X is equal to the square root of Y minus two and the lines X equals zero and Y equals five. So what's the volume of the solid that when it revolves around the y-axis. So um, this would look something like, this is x, this is y. Graph, you're looking at basically something like this. That would be zero to two. From zero to five, it seems. Or I mean from, from x equals zero, so the, the y-axis, y equals five. Let's say y equals five. So this region here, and we're revolving it around the y-axis. We're gonna get something like this, 3D, like a half a sphere sort of thing, essentially. Oh, but again, what we, what we really need to look, what we're really starting with two dimensional areas, this part right here. So the integral, um, if you remember volume, it's pi times the radius squared for a solid of revolution. So pi times the integral. Since we're revolving around y, we're going to look our, um, Endpoints will be in terms of y. So we're going from two to five. Because here y is two. On this side, y is five. So we're going to integrate from two to five. Remember, it's r of y dy, r of y squared dy. r of y, we're already given the function. So this is the square root of y minus two squared dy. But that's those that square root and that square root cancel. So all we're really integrating is y minus two dy. And you can you can just you can you can calculate this by hand or um you can use your calculator and um let's show if you want to if you like if your calculator it doesn't really do them in terms of um in terms of y. Which in my not it doesn't actually matter. You can just switch those to x's. Maybe the same thing. So let's go ahead. Let's let's calculate this pi. Two to five. Let's see if y works on you know, my calculator. Let's Oh, it does work. That's fine. So fourteen point thirteen seven. Okay, so the answer is E. Okay. Number ninety. Okay, we got the population P of a city grows according to the differential equation dP dt equals kP, where k is a constant and t is measured in. If the population of the city doubles every 12, 12 years, it's a value of k. So here you can um, actually uh, solve for k by just using information of the of the um of how long it takes to double. So um, what we can do is we know that if you remember this from your differential equations chapter, a general solution when you have a rate of growth that's proportional. So here you have a proportional rate of growth, 
the solution will be in the form y equals c e to k t. You can integrate this and find that solution if you go through it. But if you just recall, it'll it'll always be some form of this. So if you want to, if we if we want to solve for the value of k, so we're given that it doubles every twelve years. So what we can do is that if it's going to double and our original value that we start with is c, that means t c, two times c, double double in c, is equal to c e to the k times twelve, which is twelve k. Because that's how long it's going to take to double. You can cancel out the c's. So you have 2 equals e to the 12k. And solve this for k. Natural log of 2 will be equal to the natural log of e to the 12k. Bring that in front. The natural log of 2 equals 12k times natural log of e. Natural log of e is 1, of course. That this doesn't matter, that just falls away. Divide both sides by 12, and you can find k by taking the natural log of 2 and dividing by 12. Let's see what we get. About 0.057. Okay, so the answer would be a. <laughs> Just two more. Here we got that the function f is continuous on zero to eight and f of u du equals six. So what's the value of this integral from one to three? Of x times f of x squared minus one dx. Okay, this is a fancy like kind of meant to get you, but you decided to use u substitution. We're gonna make u equal to x squared minus one. If u is equal to x squared minus 1, that means du is equal to 2x dx. We got here an x dx, so we want to have 1 half du equal to x dx. And then this integral just becomes 1 half f of u du. But we have to find those endpoints, because these endpoints are in terms of x. We have x equals 1 and x equals 3. And we go rewrite these endpoints in terms of u. So when x is 1, u will be x squared minus 1, or 1 squared minus 1, which means u will be 0. So we put 0 there. And then when x is 3, u is equal to 3 squared minus 1, 9 minus 1, or 8, which is this. And this is exactly what we have here, almost. This is one half of f, e, f of u. This is a full f of u. So if a full f of u is 6, one half of f of u is simply one half of 6. So this is one half times 6, or 3. And that and your answer will then be b. All right, last one in this section. The function f is defined for all x in the closed interval a, b. If f does not attain a maximum value on a, b, which of the following must be true? If it doesn't attain a maximum value on a, b, then it, f, f is not continuous on a, b. Yeah, it's not, it, it won't be continuous because it has to attain a maximum value if it's continuous, but. Um, so, okay, so the point is, so what, how this could work, kind of, well, how does that work? Um, what you can have, like, let's say, A, B, you can have something that goes like this, maybe at a point C, but at point C, you have an open circle. And you maybe have, you may have, you may have a, a, maybe it's, so it's defined at C, but it's not continuous at C. So the answer is simply the A. The rest, you don't have to overthink. Um, and this is something covered in chapter three when you study extrema, like relative minimum, maximum. All right, so there you go. We're done with the multiple choice section. So I hope that helps. Good luck.